Ever wondered how much it costs to live in the second best city in the United States? Let's talk about Ann Arbor, Michigan. That question is going to be answered right now. In this video, I will be touching on the cost of living in Ann Arbor, not just for housing, but groceries, utilities, healthcare, and transportation. And for those of you that are interested in all things Ann Arbor, I will link a pros and cons video I made about the city in the description so you can add that to your queue. I know what you might be thinking, how is Ann Arbor ranked number two best cities to live in the whole United States? Well, livability.com has several editors and data scientists who score each important category of a city such as amenities, economy, demographics, housing, social and civic capital, education, healthcare, and of course, transportation and infrastructure. So I suggest you stick around to hear about how much it costs to live in a top city like Ann Arbor. Kicking this list off with housing, we have this chart provided by the Multiple Listing Service to show you the average sale price in September 2022 of the entire MLS, which is in blue, Ann Arbor Township, which is in green, and the city of Ann Arbor, which is in yellow. So if you're listening to the audio version of this video, be sure to make note of these dollar figures I'm about to mention. Ann Arbor Township comes in at just over $796,000, which is a 37.4% increase from a year ago, which is absolutely insane. And by looking at this chart, you can see how drastic that progression was since it grew over $180,000 since the end of 2021. The city of Ann Arbor, on the other hand, comes in much lower at just over $480,000 and follows a similar growth pattern to the whole MLS in general. No drastic hikes by any means, but it still is around $200,000 more than the MLS average as a whole. And just to put a little bit more perspective on Ann Arbor's housing market, I'll include four homes in four different price points just to show you how far you can stretch your dollar in a city like Ann Arbor. Taking a look at this first home here, we have a $250,000 condo located on Kellogg Street between Northside and Carytown, right next to the Huron River. This condo is obviously well below the city's average, but offers a great location to get the full effect of downtown Ann Arbor. Granted, this little 800 square foot, two bedroom, one bathroom spot with a carport and no basement is a little tight for your average homeowner, but for one to two people, it's not a bad way to live in downtown Ann Arbor. Taking a look at a few more images here, this condo is an end unit, which is a plus, and has a newer furnace water heater, dishwasher, along with new carpet and paint. You also have a covered carport, which is a very nice thing to have during Michigan winters, so you don't have to head outside 20 or so minutes before you have to go somewhere in 30 degree weather just to clean your car off and start it so it's all warmed up for you. This is definitely a move-in ready option at an affordable price. Taking a look at the next home on the list, we have this $530,000 single family home with just under 2,000 finished square feet four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms with a two car garage and a basement on 0.2 fenced in acres. Located on the north side of Ann Arbor near Thurston and Sugarbush Park, this home has been meticulously maintained with a new roof as of 2022 and is most certainly move-in ready for a larger group of people. No, it's not right in downtown Ann Arbor, but you have much more privacy, which is something that definitely lacks when you're closer to town. And it's only about a 14 or 15 minute drive to get to the center of downtown from this home. Home. Another great plus to this home as I click through these few images and take a look at the floor plan, these are some decent room sizes and they let in a lot of natural light. Moving on over to the third option on this list, I decided to include a home that felt a little like a private retreat on a little more acreage to show you the options the city and township of Ann Arbor offer. I think there's definitely a misconception about this city just being a place where there's as many residents packed together as possible. And yes, that holds true for the downtown area, but when you take a look at the outskirts, you get a little more space to yourself. And when I say outskirts, I'm not saying hours from civilization. These homes are 15 to 20 minutes from the center of downtown. This home is listed at $775,000 with a little under 2,000 finished square feet on 0.75 private acres with four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, which includes a basement and a two car garage. This home is located east of Burns Park and north of Allen with easy access to the University of Maine and hospital campuses, downtown Ann Arbor, shopping options, and of course, US 23. This home on the other hand is not move-in ready and will require quite a bit of funds to get it where you want it. But if you have the time and the money to transform this unique space, I believe it could be something extremely valuable, not just for you over the span of your ownership, 
but for the resale value as well. It was neglected, the landscape is overgrown, it looks like it was in the middle of being redone and it was just given up on, or maybe they came across bigger issues that will break the bank. Stepping on over to the last home on the list, located north of the last home I mentioned, this $1.1 million contemporary home was built in 1962 and designed by architects Edward Olenke and Joseph Albano with just over 2,400 finished square feet with three bedrooms, three bathrooms with a basement and a garage on just under half an acre. Probably was a hot spot back in the 60s and 70s from what you can see here. There's so much natural beauty in this home from the built-ins, courtyard area, and floating staircase. It's outdated, yes, but for someone who appreciates old modern architecture, this could have an extraordinary transformation. It's just a matter if you or someone you know has the funds and time to do it. With those home costs in mind, it's important to touch on the overall utility costs as that seems to be one of the more more common questions I receive from honest staters, and it's understandable because seasonality definitely affects the price of your monthly utilities. So many websites and resources have such a mixed review about how much utilities cost St. Arbor from $158 a month to $300 a month, not including rent, so I figured the best way to do this would be to go right to the source, and that's the people who are actually living in the city of Ann Arbor, so I came across a Reddit thread that breaks down furnace and AC costs pretty good. This person says $175 for a DTE bill on a his two bedroom house would be quite a bit since he has had it under $80 and as high as $165. Another person said their 1200 square foot home maxed out at about $175 a month and was as high as $200 a month in the colder months. Granted, it sounds like a lot of these people have a lack of insulation in their walls and possibly drafty windows. So that's a good example to be sure to seal your home up well to ensure you aren't just throwing money away during the colder months. Something I have done in the past, especially for windows, and since there's currently a supply shortage on them, and they are also very expensive, so I used a plastic wrap product that works as kind of like a shrink film insulator relatively inexpensive and it makes a big difference if you have bad seals on your windows. All in all, you could expect to pay $200 to $350 a month for all your utilities and of course the size of your home and the efficiency of your home and units makes a big difference too. Stepping over to another important topic to chat about and that's the salary and wages. Numerous sources state that households in Ann Arbor have a median annual income of just under $70,000, which represents a 5.64% annual growth rate. This next image shows the income by location. The darker blue is $141,000 plus, and the lighter grays are between $47,000 and $102,000. The next colorful chart shows the employment by occupation, just to give you an idea of what the most popular occupations are in Ann Arbor. The most popular occupation is in education, instruction, and library occupations coming in at 20.1% overall, and the lowest is construction and extraction occupations coming in at 0.79%. Since we are in the city for one of the top rated hospitals across the nation, I think it's important to tackle healthcare spending. This chart shows an orange line which depicts the progression of the spending value totals per capita since before 1992 to past 2014. Granted, this data is a little old, but it gives you an idea of the constant progression of how much people are spending for personal health care here in the state of Michigan on average. The University of Michigan healthcare system actually does have this cost estimate to show their price transparency, so I will put a link to that in the description so you can see what your Michigan medicine services will cost. Moving on over to another expense you want to consider when living in Arbor is transportation. Unless you're walking, riding a bike, or taking a hundred miles per gallon moped from point A to B like a lot of people do in Ann Arbor, you probably dislike driving in a city atmosphere, especially when all you need to do is drive a couple miles and it takes you 20 or 30 minutes. The city of Ann Arbor offers several public transportation options, so if this is the route you're going to take, be sure to familiarize yourself with their routes and schedules so you don't find yourself in a ugly late situation. Ann Arbor also offers what is known as a go pass for employers whose organization is located within the Ann Arbor Downtown Development Authority DDA boundaries, which allows you to get unlimited use of all the ride fixed bus routes in the city, along with discounts on other services and purchases at downtown stores. I'll be sure to link in the description to allow you to see if your organization is within that DDA boundary. 
The average transportation cost is between $1.50 and $3, depending on if it's a single ride or a day pass. The last thing I wanna to touch on is groceries. Ann Arbor is known to have several upscale establishments, not just in the restaurant space, but in the grocery space as well. Of course, the city has Kroger's and Bush's, but they also have Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, which can definitely make a few dents in your wallet. Numbio.com did an okay job of laying out the cost of food and groceries in the city of Ann Arbor. At the top, you can see how much restaurants cost, and this is definitely a little bit more expensive than most places in Southeast Michigan because every time I seem to eat in downtown Ann Arbor, I end up spending $15 to $22 for a sandwich or a wrap and french fries. Whereas in most other places, you could expect to pay 10 to 12 dollars for the same exact meal now in the market section you can see what your everyday items cost and off to the side in green you can get an idea how the price ranges for each of these grocery items for those of you that watched this video all the way through what's your thoughts on the cost of living in arbor and how does it compare to where you are now drop your thoughts in the comments below if you ever have any questions about ann arbor or the surrounding areas please feel free to reach out and i would be happy to help you through your thought process thank you as always for taking the time to watch my videos if they continue to give you value be sure to give them a thumbs up, tap the subscribe button, and hit the little bell so you never miss out on any of my uploads. Until next time.